Hi, vintage computer friends. This is the first demo of my latest project, Pico RAM 6116. It's a Raspberry Pi Pico based SRAM emulator and also an SD card interface. So the idea is that it emulates 6116 SRAM chips. This is a 2 kilobyte um, SRAM, right? A static RAM. And um, so you can actually store and load whole memory dumps onto SD card with this. And um, well, the 6116 was a very popular and um, frequent choice back in the day. So for example here we have the infamous um, microprocessor MPF1B, which actually has a 2 kilobyte system RAM here, which um, is available for user programs, but also contains monitor variables and as far as I know also the system stack of the Z80 and so on, right? So yeah, let's fire it up and see what we can do with it. So in principle that should also work with um, other machines that use the 6116 and it's powered over the um, over the power lines of the SRAM chip itself. And uh, to fire it up you actually have to hold down reset and you see that it then fires up as usual and the SRAM emulation is available now from addresses 1800 to 1FFF, right? 2 kilobytes, so this is U8, it's a 2 kilobyte system RAM. And yeah, so we can start entering a little program here. So you see that um, Pico RAM now came alive, right? And um, so we have a few buttons here for loading and storing SRAM contents, uh, contents from into SD card. And um, also it um, offers various banks, right? So you have four memory banks basically. And I mean, basically I'm hot plugging right the SRAM chip by doing this. So I'm toggling through the different banks here, one, two, three, four. And, um, you know, of course the microprocessor then um, usually crashes, right? So usually you have to use the reset button then. But, um, <clears throat> so the safest way to operate this is hold down reset and then use one of the of the buttons basically. For example, we can also clear a memory bank or we can change the bank, right? So, and we hold um, the microprocessor in reset mode, right? And when it starts up, so we now have, for example, um, the active bank changed and also cleared. And we can start entering a program here. I have a little program here. So let's do that. Well, that should be quick. It's a simple counter. But you see that the monitor um, is working fine with the emulated SRAM, right? No crashes. Took me quite a while to get the timing right. That definitely wasn't trivial. And I needed to use my trusted logic analyzer to figure out the correct timings to make that work. The Pico is also slightly overclocked at like 130 megahertz or something like this. And yeah, so the program should be in now. One more double check. 3E00, 3C, F5, 21 and so on. So let's just, you know, jump into the cold water and try to run it right away. And there you go. So it's working. So how about we store this to SD card now? For this I'm holding the um, microprocessor in reset and then I'm using the save, um, save button here, right? And I can select a file name here or I can just hit OK and cancel. So it's now saving it. It's already existing the file. It asks me if it should override it. And I say yes. And it saves in like one or two seconds, right? And then we can <coughs> release the reset and the system is um, back to normal here. The program, of course, is, is still fine because it's SRAM. So holding it in reset doesn't affect like a DRAM refresh or anything like that. So <coughs> we can um, now maybe power it off, right? And then I can show you that we can also load the program back from disk, uh, from SD card, I should say, right? And for this again, now the monitor is up and running. We hold the, um, 
the microprocessor in reset and then use the load button here. And now we have a little file browser and I can select the file. I simply called it uh, P, right? And hit OK. And within one second it loaded. And now we should have our program back at address 1800. And there you go. There's our counter. Yeah, and of course, I mean, it really is just like ordinary SRAM and it seems to run stable for hours. So, <clears throat> so some people um, would probably be concerned that this doesn't use any level shifters, right? So, but in the meantime, many people are saying, and there are also articles about that, saying that the Raspberry Pi Pico or the RP2040, really, right, the microcontroller here, is um, 5 volt tolerant. And um, so in my previous uh, project, uh, Pico RAM 2114, I still had level shifters, uh, basically uh, voltage divisors, right, resistor networks. I no longer do that because it doesn't seem to be necessary. And uh, yeah, I have no negative side effects from this and uh, it's running stable for hours. So it really seems to be perfectly fine, um, uh, five volt tolerant. And by the way, those are just, um, uh, D latches basically, right? Um, and I'm using this because um, I have to multiplex the address bus. So it's an 11 bit address bus, right? And I would, did not have enough input pins, GPIOs on the Pico to do the um, address bus reading in one um, in one pass. So I only had like six pins, pins or so. So I divided this into six and five basically using multiplexing and then even I had one one GPI open is still available so that can, can be used for debugging or maybe for for sound output or whatever I don't know yet so for the next version so um, okay so we still have the program here and we could also extend it a little bit right and um, how about we add sound to that and here's another little addition we can enter so starting at address 1814 we can modify the program and put in some more opcodes here that'll we produce sound then and then we are going to store it back all right now with sound now let's also save this um, using a different file name this time and maybe call it R. <laughs> Good, okay. Saving. Saved. And uh, yeah, I can also um, load the other program without sound back now. So that's the one with sound. But say I wanted to load the other program back, I can simply um, load it into a different memory bank now. So I'm changing the memory bank to... Uh, okay, the wrong button. I don't want to clear the bank. I'm changing the memory bank to 1. And now you see that the program, of course, is also gone here. So this bank is empty, right? Um, but we can load now the other program into that bank. And yeah, so for this we really need to hold down uh, reset. And now we have the <coughs> program without sound in bank zero. Right, and we can simply switch the bank. Was it bank one? Yeah. And there we should still have the program with sound. Oh, no, actually, it was in bank zero. Sorry for the confusion. This bank. Yeah, so I consider that quite useful because it gives you a way now to actually um, store programs or whole memory dumps to SD card, right? In principle, you could even use an assembler on the PC and produce a bunch of, um, you know, hex, Intel hex code and put that on the SD card. So you can use a real assembler. There's also still potential to use this display for other things here. So currently it's really only um, 
you know, displaying the logo and used for the um, file operations, but yeah, there are potential other use cases for this. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that will also work with other machines, right, that use the 6116 SRAM chip. And yeah, so here you see my trusted HP logic analyzer that I got for $50. Uh, eight years ago, right, from some electronics recycling uh, facility, basically. And that's what I used in order to figure out the timings, right. So for this kind of work, I think you really need a um, <coughs> logic analyzer to get the timings right. So that was quite delicate, but yeah, I'm happy that it works. And I'll create a um, Hackaday page about this project and also put the Gerbas as well as the sources and the firmware online. Uh, on GitHub, so let me still, you know, refine that a little bit, but overall I think the project is um, up and running and yeah, I hope you'll find it useful for your own uh, microprofessor. Until then, take care, bye.